you have a good reputation. You had a good reputation. That's why the two Democrats supported you. But the longer you hold on to Mr. Barr and this report that Mr. Barr gave you as special counsel, your reputation will be damaged. As everybody's reputation who gets involved with Donald Trump is damaged, he's damaged goods. There's no good dealing with him because you will end up on the bottom of a pyre. I yield back the balance of my time. Sure. Can my, we uh, presume the gentleman's undecided on, on how he feels about the pre former president? Ain't nothing changed, nothing new here to see. This ain't nothing but some political maneuvering. America! Welcome to the eulogy. Eat it up. It's called political buffoonery. Hey there, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Dumbocracy. It's a show we started to look at some of the dumbest newsmakers of the week in real time and break down what makes them the buffoons that they are. So right now, we're going to stick with the whole John Durham hearing that happened in the House Judiciary Committee last week to break down another buffoon interrogating John Durham. And this time, we're looking at Representative Steve Cohen from the great state of Tennessee. Uh, he seems to have a little bit of a, a I, I, I'm breaking down just saying it. He has a little bit of a problem with Donald Trump. And I think you'll see that right in the opening of the clip. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Durham, you were appointed by whom? Um, so I was, uh, who recommended you and appointed you? As the special counsel? No, as the U.S. attorney. As U.S. attorney. Um, it was President Trump at the time with two Democratic senators from Connecticut supporting the nomination. Mr. Trump appointed you. You believe Mr. Trump has pretty good judgment on people, their abilities, and their character? I'm not going to characterize um, Mr. Trump or my thought. So you see exactly where we're going right now. Steve Cohen has it bad for Donald Trump. If you want to talk about Trump derangement syndrome, boy, does he have a really, really acute case of it. We're not even, what, 30 seconds into what he's talking about? He's mentioned Donald Trump three times already. Let's see how many times we can get him to mention it. That's about Mr. Trump. Mr. Barr appointed you special counsel, is that correct? That's correct. Mr. Trump has called Mr. Barr a gutless pig, a coward, and a rhino. Which of those is correct, which isn't? In my experience, none of those are correct. So Mr. Trump isn't that good of an expert on character and judging people. In your opinion, he isn't, because he's, he's none of those. He's not a gutless pig. But Trump says he is. Yeah, that's outside the scope of my report. Uh, yeah, clearly this is outside the scope of the Durham report. Uh, but you see what Cohen's trying to do here. He's trying to basically uh, gin up bad feelings towards former President Trump from one of his appointees. And frankly, it, it's not for Durham to say whether he agrees with the opinions of ex-President Trump or not, or whether or not he agrees with the opinions of anybody. He's there to give testimony about the facts uncovered by his report and to let everyone else make their own conclusions that, you know, reasonable or unreasonable. But Cohen doesn't really care about the contents of the report because, again, the report was made by Republicans, not Democrats. So if they're not on his team, he's going to try to deflect, diminish, and just dilute what is being said in the report. And Durham's not taking the bait, as you see so far, even though Cohen is laying it on pretty thick. And you can feel the, the anger of Cohen is sort of palpable here towards Donald Trump. It's not like he's mincing words here. And as we'll see as we go on, he's not going to mince any words when it comes to Donald Trump. Also outside the scope of your report, apparently. <laughs> oh, and you see the crowd reaction because the crowd realizes how dumb this line of questioning is with regards to the opinions of Donald Trump. Donald Trump in the, in the House right now is not on trial. He may be in the state of New York and in federal court in Florida, but he's not going to be put on trial here in front of the uh, the House Judiciary Committee. And uh, John Durham is not taking the bait. Also outside of the scope of your report or your, was, was apparently the meeting at Trump Tower between the Russians and the Trump boys where they talked about allegedly adoptions, but we know it was really about sanctions. How was that outside of your report? Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite follow that. Meeting at the Trump Tower, attorney, uh, the Russian attorney came to the Trump and Donald Trump Jr. were just wonderful, wonderful. We love it, we love it. Uh, you see, Cohen's not really being so specific here. And, and Durham is doing what any good witness should do, whether it be at a trial or before a, a legislative body. 
oh, any statement under oath, really. He is making the person posing the question, he's putting them to the test by making sure that they give as specific a question or as pointed of a question as possible. So when Cohen's talking about, oh, that, that thing that happened uh, way back when at Trump Tower involving the Trump boys and this, that, and the third, he's not being specific enough to get an answer out of Durham, and Durham is putting him to the test here. Which is, which is a sign of Mr. Cohen's buffoonery here. Because, again, if you want to get some points scored, do your homework. Mention dates, times, locations, individuals involved. Instead of just saying some guys did something, to put it another way. Russian decisions to interact with the Trump campaign and influence the actions of the campaign, allegedly for adoption law, but really for sanctions relief. The FBI came up with that, did they not? I'm, um, a meeting took place at Trump Towers on June 9th. The lure, as I understand it, was that there was um, information, derogatory information on Clinton that was going to be provided. They met, and as I believe in a HIPSI report, the HIPSI report fully laid that out, that the discussion then at Trump Towers was about Adoption, not about anything relating to Mrs. Clinton. It's totally, it was totally about sanctions. You're trying to get rid of the Magnitsky law. Adoptions is a ruse. Should you not have gone and looked into that and seen what the Russians were wanting in return for that? Because that's the biggest thing Putin wanted at the time. Now, let's also remember what John Durham's focus and what his, uh, what his charging orders were, basically, from the Attorney General. He was to investigate the origins of the FBI's uh, and the Department of Justice's impetus for opening a full investigation into what has now been known as Crossfire Hurricane. It wasn't to relitigate or to reinvestigate the findings from the Mueller report. So when Cohen is asking a question about, well, why didn't you investigate this? It seems pretty ob obvious that you should have investigated this June 9th meeting. And thanks to John Durham for clearing up what exactly the hell he was talking about. When you ask why didn't you investigate something that's outside the scope of the investigation, that's, that the answer you're going to get is, well, that's not what I was told to do. Let's see if I'm right about that. Was to get Trump to relieve his people of Magnitsky sanctions. I think that um, uh, Director Mueller investigated that, and I believe one of your House committees um, explored that. That was outside the scope of what we were looking at. And there you have it right there. Not only was there already a House Judiciary Committee investigation, there was also an investigation that was, you know, a little thing called the Mueller Report, the Mueller Investigation, Crossfire Hurricane. That was already done by the FBI and DOJ. That wasn't what John Durham was charged with. But the fact that Cohen wants to revisit that and not talk about what Durham actually found shows you that maybe the Democrats and maybe Cohen is a little feared, maybe he's a little scared, a little frightened of the uh, findings in the Durham Report. Like what you see so far? Go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Also, leave us a comment and tell us what you're thinking. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another show. And, and, it's, and it was outside the scope of your authority to look at Klimnikov, Klim, Klimnik and, and Manafort meeting at a show. Can he not pronounce names? Is that what's going on here? Klimnikov? I mean, that's, that's a name that was around a lot. Uh, sound a little bit like Porky Pig there, but uh, I think that's what happens when emotions overtake reason, as we'll see continuously here. Changing polling data. Was that? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not following you. Manafort. Question. You remember Manafort, the crook that managed the campaign for nothing but got tons of money from the from different Russian people over the years. Oh, he's getting mad now. Manafort. Gosh darn it! Don't you know what I'm talking about here? Didn't you investigate all this? It's all about emotion at this point and not about reason for Cohen because he's trying to score points and he's doing it really, really hard, but it's not really coming up with anything. That y'all pardoned, that your, Mr. Barr later got helped him with the commutation or a pardon, I think a pardon, Manafort. I know who Mr. Manafort is. Yeah, he met with Kalimnik and they discussed polling data. You don't know about that? No, the Mr. Klimnik met with a lot of people, including people. He met the with Department. Manafort and discussed polling data. Do you not know about that? And I absolutely love what Durham is doing here. Durham is like, what are you talking about? There's, there's this, there's that. Because Cohen is trying to just use a motion in order to uh, make his points. But he's not scoring points because anger 
is the enemy of reason. And right now, Steve Cohen is his own enemy in trying to get somewhere with John Durham. I'm aware of that. All right. Why did you then th not think it was a good idea for you to look into it and see if the FBI wasn't correct in that there was collusion, a connection between Russia and the Trump campaign to elect Trump? My assignment was to look at the conduct of the intelligence community agencies, uh, not to conduct a separate investigation that was done by the House or that was done by the Senate or was done by Director Mueller. You don't think that if there was if the intelligence communities, the FBI, and others came up with this information and did good work, that that should be part of your balanced report? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not following your question. I apologize. And again, he already told him twice. Durham already told Cohen twice. This was outside the scope of my investigation. And you keep asking me about things that are not there and whether I put them in or not. That, that's, not what my, that's not what I'm here to talk about. Durham is not here to talk about that. But Cohen doesn't want to get that through his thick skull because he's so focused on Trump and he's so focused on hating Trump and getting to Trump that he doesn't care about what the purpose of this hearing is, which is to address whether the FBI and DOJ had, prop, had, the, uh, had followed their protocols when they opened up a full investigation to cross by a hurricane. And the fact that they didn't do a proper assessment, they didn't do a preliminary investigation, they just jumped straight to a full-on investigation within three days of receiving the Steele dossier, and that should not have happened. That was improper protocol. That's what the reason for the hearing is. Not all this Trump stuff revisited many years later. Well, if it's I've a question. tried to follow your report. Mr. Donald Trump Jr. would have called it a, a nothing burger. Mm -hmm. You got no convictions. You got nothing. It was all set up to hurt the Mueller report, which was correct and was redacted, to hurt the Bidens and to help Trump. And you see, this is what we're left with now. Cohen couldn't score his points. He now is, has to go to insulting John Durham, a prosecutor with over four years' experience saying that he didn't get any convictions on uh, any cases that he brought, you know, cases that were brought in the, you know, the District of Columbia, by the way, in, in front of a, a jury that is overwhelmingly Democrat, over 90 percent Democrat, the jury pool there, uh, saying that he didn't get any convictions on Democrats who he said did wrongdoing. And, and let's keep in mind, it, it's not about convictions, it's about the findings of improper behavior. Criminality is one thing, but improper behavior and improper conduct doesn't necessarily have to be criminal for it to be wrong, especially when we're talking about the policies and procedures of the premier law enforcement agency in the world. So when you talk about, oh, you didn't get any convictions, well, that's not true because there was one conviction that was done via a plea, a plea deal, and there were two others that went to trial and were found uh, not guilty. Uh, but nonetheless, the issue before the House Judiciary Committee are reforms needed in the culture of the of the uh, FBI and the DOJ, not necessarily uncovering criminal behavior. That's what the Durham report was all about. But again, Cohen, he's left with no more ammo, so he goes for the insults. And you were a part of it. You have a good reputation. You had a good reputation. That's why the two Democrats supported you. But the longer you hold on to Mr. Barr and this report that Mr. Barr gave you as special counsel, your reputation will be damaged. As everybody's reputation who gets involved with Donald Trump is damaged, he's damaged goods. There's no good dealing with him because you will end up on the bottom of a pyre. I yield back the... And there it is. It's all about Trump derangement, folks. This is the typical type of buffoon that I wrote about in my book, Schnooks, Crooks, Lies and Scoundrels, a field guide to identifying political buffoons. And I devote a whole chapter to this, and I'm just going to go through the book, and I'm going to show it to you right here. There's, there's actually two types of buffoons that uh, we're dealing with here when we're talking about Steve Cohen. One's a little more severe than the other. The first one is buffoonicus incredulous, the hot mess. This is the buffoon that engages in emotional rhetoric and specifically anger in order to evoke the support of their side. But at the end of the day, it's a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing. Now, this type of buffoon, there's tons of examples of it out there. The, the prime example I give is Cory Booker uh, in, in the book, Schnooks, Crooks, Lies, and Scoundrels, talking about how uh, he tried to appeal to emotion during the, the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation hearings. Uh, that, that's one example of it. But there's, but there's so many examples, including this example 
by by Steve Cohen here. And what happens to Mr. Cohen is what happens with buffoons like this, these hot messes, when they appeal to emotion. They open themselves up to ridicule because they haven't done anything substantive. And you'll see what happens right here, right after he made this impassioned speech about you're going to end up on the, the heap of people that Donald Trump has, has, uh, has used and abused and Trump's damaged goods and all this other nonsense. Watch what happens at the end of his presentation here, at the end of his five minutes in the committee hearing. Balance of my time. Sure. My, Can we uh, presume the gentleman's undecided on, on how he feels about the pre former president? <laughs> Gentlemen, witness can respond. Yeah, my uh, concern about my reputation is with uh, the people who I respect and my family and my Lord. And I'm perfectly comfortable with my reputation with them, sir. Well said. God bless you. Um, the... Um, And the crowd goes wild. First of all, uh, a joke made in, in open session about a member of Congress from another member of Congress, which, listen, I, I don't necessarily like that. I don't think that that's warranted. I don't think that that's decorum. It's probably not, it's probably bad form on the part of the Republicans that said that. Uh, but nonetheless, in pointing that out, I think we all see the buffoonery of Representative Cohen. And Durham's response was perfect. He basically said in the most eloquent way possible, I don't give a good damn what you think. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the best way to deal with a judgmental, hot-headed, hot mess of a buffoon. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and I'm going to see what other clips I can dig up to show you all of the buffoonery that happened this week in Democracy. All views and opinions expressed here are not necessarily of the mainstream media and may offend some listeners. It's called political buffoonery.